This episode of Vic's Basement is brought to you by EB Games. Support us by buying your video games at EB Games. Welcome to Game of Thrones Now, Hi. Game of Thrones Now, Game of Thrones Now. Game of Thrones it is talk. Monday morning, Game of Thrones Coffee Talk. Victor Lucas could not be with us no, today. So he's having his voice deepened and he's having it shined to a high gloss. Uh -huh. That's what he does on Mondays sometimes. Anyway, Hello, we can everybody. do this though. No, we can. We, we're in our PJs. We can do this. I, I feel like we're kind of matching a little bit. Yeah, it is. I've only. Well, I like your pants better than my pants, but whatever. Yeah, your really pants get into that. stink. Anyway, last night. And nights, I didn't shower. You didn't shower. Listen, last week we had an exciting week because yep. we started our Cash for Kyle campaign. That's Cash with a K. And uh -huh. Kyle, of course, that's also with a K. Yeah. And so we put 15 things. Oh, sorry. We put 15 things on the old chopping block. When you do an auction, you put something <laughs> did, out yeah. there and you ask the people to donate an amount of money that will mm -hmm. be the highest amount. The people who donate the highest amount will win these items. Aaron, I want to try to, Aaron's our, Aaron's our guy who's producing today's episode. He's our guy. Aaron, this is the first item. We're just going to run through them again really quickly. Okay. I know that you saw this on Friday. And I'm going to Instagram and tweet about what we're doing now because I didn't do that yet. It's fascinating. I know. Metal Gear Solid binoculars. This is uh, Vic's item number one. If you want to bid on this, you do that at bids at epn.tv. And that's item 1V. One for, and V is for Victor. One is for the item. <laughs> Listen! Okay. What? And uh, he is a Victor. Okay. okay. Yeah. This is a, the Halo Master Chief souvenir helmet. Yeah. Marissa actually has worn that a couple of times. That yeah, is item two V. So you can bid on that. Bids at epn.tv. The uh, the auction goes up until Thursday at midnight. That's Pacific Standard Time. So this is item number three: Monster Hunter egg uh, with a plush monster inside. The egg was kind of plasticky and clear. <laughs> Uh, and this is a souvenir from the Monster Hunter series. This is item 3V. And this is item number four. This is the, the South Park Stick of Truth Grand Wizard Cartman figure. This is item 4V. You can, you can bid on this. Bids at epn.tv. And uh, we should do a telethon. Yeah. So I can, re I can really feel my oh, telethon we, rhythm we should coming do, through. Put, we need to do something uh, to showcase our talents, though. Would you do like a poetry reading? Listen, and then... look. Pin. Let's put a pin in it. Okay. Now this is uh, 5V. This is Vix Assassin's Creed Assassin's Creed Unity Arno figure. The character in the game was named Arno. I thought it was garbage head, but it's actually Arno. Um, he's uh, it's a very dramatic, beautiful uh, figure, and you can you can uh, bid on that. That's item 5V. We're moving into Marissa's items now. Oh great! Here we go. <laughs> That's the Commander Shepard. POP vinyl figure, that's 6M, 6M, bids at epn.tv. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and that's signed by Mark Muir, your personal friends with him. He did sign it. Yeah. <laughs> it was really great. <laughs> this is item 7M, this is 7M. This is, I really want to bid on this. This is this the is limited really edition, the Renderman Pixar walking teapot. This is an incredible item. Yeah, for those that don't appreciate it, it's actually worth a lot of money. And just so you know, just all facts on the table here, we've gotten plenty of bids on these things. And so the we prices have. are rising. So get your bid in soon. Yes. Okay, let's see. This is, uh, oh, that's still the same one. Uh, this is Marissa's. <laughs> it's like Power Pack. This is 8M. This is the Power Package, it's called. Three of Marissa's favorite things. Uh, and that's all packaged up for one savvy bidder. That's item 8M. It's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. Yeah. No, no. It's, it's all good stuff. <laughs> and she'll sign any of these. We'll sign any of this stuff. Whatever sure. you want us to do with these things. Whatever. Uh, Maybe I'll send some baked goods with it. I don't know. Uh, Whatever you can bid, though. This is 9M. This is the Wargaming.net bar set. Okay, so this is good. I actually was thinking about it this weekend. Because okay. I was thinking of having like a little adult time by myself. And I had a <laughs> you little had, gin. You had a bottle of wine that lasted no. like three. Weeks. I know, but You're I, like, had, I guess I should drink I, it again. I've had this bottle of like the small bottle of uh, gin that I've had since I've moved here. Yes. And I've slowly just been having a little bit of it. Yes. And so on the weekend I tried to have a little bit and I was like, you know what? I wish I had this mm -hmm. to make myself a little martini. Well, um, and I didn't. You can't have it anymore it. because it's on the auction block. This is item nine I M. I want to take it back. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. I've, I've already given it away, but yeah, well, and now we're up to the, <laughs> probably our greatest item here. Marissa, you really put together a nice package for the people. This hey, is a, a this Ouija is board. Do you say Ouija? 
Ouija. Uh, and that's item Ouija. 10M. So you can order Marissa's Ouija board. And there might be baked goods in there instead of gameplay pieces. I don't know. This is We played Maybe. Ouija on this. Maybe. And we actually contacted Tommy Tallarico. So he's on the <laughs> other side. He sent us some messages through Marissa's Ouija board. Uh, right. This is my stuff. This is my journey scarf. This is 11S. Uh-huh. S, I forgot my name. Yeah. 11S, bids at EPN.TV. This is actually the souvenir scarf. From Journey, if you love Journey, you've got to have this scarf. Yeah, we've actually had a few bids for that. Really oh, have we? That. Yeah. Okay, I got to keep track of those. Okay, uh, this is uh, this is my crappy one. This is 12s. <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is the, really crappy. the, the but, yeah. Air Bud Russell Madness is on Blu-ray now. But you probably didn't know that. Yeah, but he did write a nice note. I on did. A, on a, something that meant something. To the him. thing to the left is a, a PlayStation 4 launch event invite that I used. For, it was one of the best gaming events I have ever yeah. been to, and I signed it on the back, and I wrote a little note to whoever collects this. It really, I can't believe I'm, I'm letting go of this invitation. It was a great event, a great night, and I'm now I'm ready to give it back to the world. So that's item 12S. Oh, that's sweet. This is a, uh, a lighter, a 1941 replica, as you can see from the image. That's uh, that was pr- used as a promotional item for the saboteur. You remember the video game, the saboteur, two thousand nine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that I'm was, still trying. I'm still trying was, to get the right hashtags. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. That was. Uh, yeah, we're, and we're moving on to the Game of Thrones talk in just a second. <laughs> yeah. Here's my. Uh, this is item fourteen S. This is a blue show worn plaid flannel shirt. This is very rare. I've worn this on the show about four or five hundred times. We're still oh. not sure on the figures. Yeah, and uh, that, that, fetch, that fetching photo, I really should have that frame. That's beautiful. That's 14S, and this yes. is the last one. This is a Star Wars lunchbox, so you'll be the king of your lunchroom with this Star Wars lunchbox. This is 15S, inside an assortment of action figures. I'm not a big action figure guy. Victor Lucas is the action figure guy. I'm the Game of Thrones guy, as you'll realize yeah. in a few seconds here. So those things, you can own all of those things. You have until Thursday this week. Midnight Pacific Standard Time. Ooh. Make your bids. Bids at epn.com. Yeah, well, yeah, this is all for Kyle. This is all for, all for an Kyle. Amazing Every fan penny of it. Mr. Precision, Mr. Underscore Precision. Yep. When he uh, sends us his Twitter questions, they're always great. And, and he's been going through a tough time, and we yeah. want to help him out yeah. uh, because we're nice people. Well, sometimes. Yeah, today sometimes. we're nice. Today yeah. we're feeling okay. So we're doing this know, all for a fan. So. And yeah, I, he's a really great fan of the show, and we just—I just feel like we're one big yeah. happy family, and we're these a big are, community here, and I we, are. we should help each other. And these are all treasures. Yeah. And and Vic, especially, it's difficult for him to let anything go. Totally. I and mean, it's tough for us, especially because like that PlayStation thing—you were holding on to that forever. Like it was easy <laughs> for you. Well, I mean, to let it, go it was of. only two years I've been hanging on. The the saboteur lighter. Yeah. I've been hanging on for, for since 2009, for okay, sure. Okay, so the lighter. Sorry, I used the wrong example. The lighter. Yeah, we've been hanging on to a lot of this stuff yeah. for, qu- for quite a while now. Yeah. All right, let's talk so about... So, let's... Yeah, okay. Are you going to say you everything that I'm trying to say yeah. all show long? Mm-hmm. I love to work with you. You're so I fun. Uh, by the I way, we have a Game of Thrones snack. snack today. Oh, great. What uh, are these called? Uh, well, the we have... Uh, these are donuts. You only can get them in Canada. So, uh, <laughs> you can get these in the States too. This is my favorite right there, that round one with the ridges on it. It's full of sugar. Yeah. Uh, I believe this one is your favorite. That is my favorite. That's a chocolate dip. That's and ch- then it's technically known as a chocolate dip. decided to get my least favorite donut as well. Uh, this is your, I mean, they look very similar, these two donuts. And yet somehow and they're not at all you love this one, one is- and you hate this one. Okay, I don't... Listen, I don't hate it because I love anything sweet and chocolatey, whatever. So you'll still eat it. You'll choke it down. <laughs> I'll still eat it, yeah. But do you see how it's not like it's double chocolate, but this is the cakey kind. This is the best kind of donut when it's in a Timbit or when it's in a donut hole. Um, but when it's just like a cake like this, just so dry with chocolate on top, this is moist and doughy like a donut All should right. be. You and know then what? yours is just filled with sugar. Bring it up on your own podcast called Donuts with Marissa. That's okay. Thursdays at 4 p.m. No, okay. I'm just kidding. There's no donuts oh. with Marissa. I mean, you would enjoy I that. I would do that. Yeah, anyway, we're going to start having snacks every week on okay. Game of Thrones. This is week three. Okay. Oh, shoot. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm going into the Switch channel. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. I'm this going is, into the Switch This is week three. Do you want to have a, a little bite? Because yeah. we got a big show to talk I about. I do. Let's get into this. Oh, my God. Oh, that's so good. Oh, my God. I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to the whole plate. You're gonna, okay, you're going to keep it. You're like a savage. You don't even need utensils. Oh, man, this is so good. All right. Oh, someone says I hate those chocolate timbits. 
They, they are so dense, you're right, but when they're in a donut, they're the worst. I, I tried to explain this to him, but he doesn't care. Listen, I'm sitting right here. What? I'm not a remote person sending you messages from space. It's Twitch. Let's talk. You and me. Here we go. Yeah. Episode three. Last oh night God. it happened. Yeah. Everything opens. All right, we'll just talk about the parameters. Okay. Opens with Arya, who is in the house of black and white. Mm -hmm. All the statues have moisture on their faces. <laughs> they do all have moisture on their faces, too. I really don't like that house of black and white. I don't either. I don't really know what's going to happen or where we're going to go, but I, I'm intrigued. I don't like it, and I, I do worry about Arya. Because she's one of my favorite characters, and she's yeah. just a kid, but she acts like a, a boy sometimes, even though she's a girl, and she acts tougher than she acts really is. You, you sort of do that, she too. She has to. She has to. It starts with that. And to intimidate. Yeah. And uh, the guy, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, Jack and Naga? Jack and... Yeah. I'm pretty, that's pretty good, though. It's pretty good. Uh, so they have a little powwow at the beginning. And they talk about some stuff, and we're back in the house of black and white. But at the very end of the episode, I'm just going to race right there. Oh, wow. We lose... Uh, there are spoilers today. So if you didn't see yeah. the show, you should watch the show, then watch this. Oh, my God. You should watch it while eating either a donut or a scone. So good. Okay, continue. Tyrion uh, gets captured by Jorah at mm -hmm. the very end. I know I sound like a dork saying these things, but mm -hmm. man... Jora was has always been one of my favorite characters. He was a great, really? yeah. Well, he's a great counselor for Daenerys. I think every step of the way, he's always had good advice. Daenerys was, I think, I think she was in the wrong for getting rid of him. I understand why she did. Yeah, for sure, because he originally was there to spy on her. Yeah. So I but understand that. But then him. he fell in love with her. I mean, have no, you seen this woman? No. I can't even believe she's real, like a human being. I know, I love that in the brothel, too, there was um, a prostitute that actually was dressing up like she's doing right. cosplay as Daenerys. And everybody wanted everybody her. everybody wants a queen. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought that was really racy, but you know there's porn out there, definitely, that has done this already. Queen porno. Yeah. Yeah. I don't no, know. I don't want to get into porn. All right. I'm there sure probably there is. is Game of Thrones Why porn? do we have to make it disgusting? We just started. It's morning. I just got up. Already you're going into disgusting. I have a donut. <laughs> No more donuts for you. That's <laughs> so it. Good. Anyway, uh, so the guy, he was in the Resident Evil movies. I know you didn't like those. I didn't like them either. But he was, he's the guy who plays Jorah, the actor. He, uh, as Tyrion is taking a pee, you know, so it starts with the wet faces at the very beginning. Which it looks so much, like so much fun. If I were a guy, I would totally I pee over bridges. I would really want to find a bridge today and pee yes. off the way that Tyrion, because he, this, he really looks like he's in heaven. Sure, but like the drunk pee and he's, just slinging it back, yeah. plus he's being at the same time. That looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. But then this whole episode, though, and I, I'm just going to say something. Okay. This whole, uh, the whole season, I'm, I'm, these are tough episodes sometimes because, especially this one, this one has even more scenes than episode two from last week. It feels really crammed with stuff and all the stuff, and I know that this is the way shows work and fictions work. Mm -hmm. It's all set up for some bigger payoff coming later in the season. And, and, you know, honestly, I watched this episode a couple of times. I'll, you know, I'm, I'm not a savant. I didn't just watch this once. I watched all the scenes and I thought about them. But We're all very proud. I know, I know. Thank you. Uh, and, but I do, like, there's something just, I'm, it's a little dull so far. It feels a little dull, and I want something something to happen. And the first three episodes, after all the excitement and being so looking forward to the show coming back to HBO, yeah. I, I just I want more for some reason. And the show is over delivered every step of the way, every sure. season, four seasons before this. And I'm just ready for this show to start over delivering. But right now, it's kind of under de delivering. There's so much stuff that's so subtle. There's still so much exposition. There's still so much setup that needs to happen, though, yeah. with the characters and where they're at right now. Um, and we had the same discussion last week, I feel, where I felt that the episode was dull going in, but then we were talking about it. The more we were talking about it, the more I realized there was so much that actually did happen. So maybe this third episode isn't as exciting as the other two yeah but i even felt that way about the last one it wasn't that exciting but then when you talk about it and you really break down every scene you realize that you know everyone's story is progressing like brianna tarth and podrick i love seeing them now even though i'm kind of annoyed with everything that they have yes. to do still because they still have a lot of convincing to do with everyone and you want to be on their side and they had this really great moment of 
bonding and forgiveness with one another and and Podrick is just this wonderful soul that just wants to do right by her and then she felt so bad because she realized you know what he's just a nice guy I love that they're finding common ground yeah. I mean I love seeing these relationships develop I mean that's what I, one of the things I've loved in addition to nudity and um, violence yeah. I enjoy seeing some real relationships happen and, and it they were an unlikely pairing yeah. and I watched them wander around and, and she, now she's she's kind of teaching him she well, she talks about te te teaching him the skills of, of becoming a knight, which right. is basically she's saying, "I will turn you into a man." Yes. And so, and Podrick's very open to that, and I love just how honest and revealing they are with each other. I love the story she tells about Renly and how he asked her to dance with with her in a very vulnerable moment. I love that she's willing to let herself be mm -hmm. so vulnerable with, yeah. with Podrick. I, I like their. I wasn't really too sure about their relationship and where it was going, but then the more I saw this week, I. I'm into it. I, I like what's happening and here. And you also understand the person that she is and, and what she's had to go through in her life. Because she was just teased mercilessly her whole life for being the ugliest girl or whatever. And actually having to realize that you're the ugliest girl yeah. in your town, that would be devastating for a young woman. Like, that's a confidence breaker. That's it. Yeah. You're done. So, I remember when somebody pointed out my mustache when I was... In grade two, you're, you're that really killed me. Very lustrous beard that you were capable of, able to grow when you were just in grade school. I had it, yeah. I know. I had a little bit of a shadow. <laughs> so, um, you know, it it hurts. It kills. It cuts deep. You know, when you're a little girl, like you just want to be accepted, right? And so that story that she told, it was it was sweet and it was revealing when you realize how strong she really is. And I feel like uh, Brienne so far this season is she, you know. Arya turned her back on her last season, and now Sansa turned her back very early on her this season. Oh, God. Yeah, Sansa. And I, you st I started worrying about her a little bit, but you know, I just she is one of the most interesting characters on the show. Uh, so many really great things have happened. She's had so many strong moments. Yeah. Um, not only strong-minded, not only physically strong, but also strong-mindedness as well. And she's very smart. She's good. And I always feel that way when I watch the show. Is I start thinking, who's the good, who are the good people? Mm -hmm. And who are the not good people? The bad people? And then those are my, the good people are always my favorites. And then the ones in between, I don't really know how I feel about them. But the not knowing how I feel about them is why I keep exciting. watching. Thanks. Yeah. So how do you feel about Sansa then? Uh, I like where she is right now. I mean, this is an interesting episode. She's, uh, Littlefinger has committed her to uh, Ramsey Bolton yeah, now. Ramsey Bolton, but we know him as Ramsey Snow. Yeah, and he's, he's just a he's horrible, horrible person. One of the sickest person. characters in, in the entire series, and now they're, they're going to be together. Yeah, but all the women are jealous. All the women in that town are looking at Sansa like, who this bitch? <laughs> well, it's not just any town, it's it's Winterfell. Right, of course. So, so the, it's rightly Sansa's. Yes, well, it is It is rightly Sansa's, and and. It is fun to go back to this place where we so much happened, especially in the first season, yeah. and now it's just kind of like a little stopover place. And now Roose Bolton is in charge of Winterfell, but I love when Sansa arrives. She agrees with Littlefinger. She says, I'll go and I'll do the shitty thing that you want me to do. But she goes upstairs and she sees an old woman and she's, she said, I don't know what she said. She says like, the, you know, the North misses you or something. Oh, the North remembers. The North remembers, that's yeah, right. You have remembers, a good memory. But it was, it was crazy when she first saw um, Ruth Bolton because he killed her mother. Killed her mother and her, and brother. her brother. Right, he set up so the situation. She, she's got to just be courteous and kind. You could see her thinking about that as he's talking to her. And then she decides to just curtsy. You know, I don't really think... I mean, I mean, again, we talked about this last week, or I talked about it last week. I just... I don't think we see this this concentration of strong female characters on TV anywhere else, you know? Yeah. I mean, there are strong women on TV for sure, sure, but in this show, it feels like the balance has tipped towards women now, and women are the ones who are doing the most interesting things. They're the ones that are having the most fun. They're the ones who are making things happen and manipulating people. I mean, the you know, the two, the Ali Frazier boxing reference uh, of the series right now is uh, Marjorie, and Cersei, sure. and I love this episode, and I love the tension between the two of them. And I think yeah, yeah, every great. scene where they have to communicate, you know, I can just you can see Marjorie. And I don't know, you know, I'm an older man. I don't know all the ways of women, but I feel like I'm learning some of the ways in which they can Literally. make men do what they want them sure. to do. And it's so fun. <laughs> Cersei, who's just been terrifying for four seasons. Yeah. 
I feel she's vulnerable now, and I feel the power of Marjorie. And Marjorie has the king's ear, and she totally. gets everything that she wants just by pushing and pulling the king a little bit. Well, and now she has all the strings because she can now offer him her vagina. And that it like this is the first time this this kid he's a kid. He, he is. The first time you you ever felt a vagina. I mean, that must have been very exciting. I'm still waiting for one. <laughs> I hope so it's fun. He's, so he's so, of course, in love with her. And in can't love with her. Yeah. How beautiful she is. But I love her too. I her. love when she, he's just like you like sailing, and she. Yeah. I love she's sailing, like, and you oh, see her you acting. Sail. Yeah. Oh yeah, she really puts it on for him. Because yeah, she it's great. Exactly what she's doing, but to think of being in that situation. This is easy for her now because she yeah. she doesn't have a man or a man's mentality to deal with. She has this boy that she can just mold and shape and take from his mother, which is also a prize to have too. Like I don't know how I, how this uh, battle plays out yeah. because I'm I re I'm still fond of Cersei even though she's done a million horrible things on the show. I just feel bad for her. I, and I feel bad for her, and she is kind of losing her footing that she used to have and had enjoyed for, for the first four seasons. She's been so strong and terrifying. Mm -hmm. And now, this is really, like, seeing her vulnerable is, is kind of exhilarating. Mm -hmm. It's kind of exciting to watch. You see her vulnerable um, when she walks away from that moment when Marjorie's laughing with all of her girlfriends. And then she says, you know, oh, like, yeah. I, I wish scene. we had wine for you, but it's a bit too early in the day for us. <laughs> I know, <laughs> like, I love like, Just cutting her whenever yeah. she yeah, can. little insults, little insults, and that's how women are, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, when there's, sure, when there's hatred there, when there's a way to get a woman or take her down, sure, uh, women can be pretty vicious, so, so okay. I don't know, I, I just, uh, I did feel bad for Cersei for sure, because her little boy is just being yeah. manipulated now, and she can't do anything about it, and well, the fact that she, like, he actually went up to his mom and was suggesting that she leave. Yeah, right away. Like, well, that's how you, the dudes are like that the first time they have sex. They're like, well, whatever uh, I have to do, let's keep it going. Beep a deep. <laughs> you know? Okay, see you. Okay. You know, a couple of other really significant moments from last night's episode yeah. uh, Arya deciding to uh, leave her Arya ness behind. Well, she had too, or else she couldn't be no one. And I love that, though. I love that she gets rid of everything except for one thing. Her needle, and yeah. she's so sad. She is so sad. What a great actress. And I just feel like now, you know, the show doesn't really do things like that that often, but I feel like she has to just get needle out again at some point. Something, something or maybe like she that. doesn't. I don't know. She, I don't know, but there's no, like, how could she get rid of it? That's just, like, her last tie to her family and to her father, and she can't, yeah. like, there's no way that she could get rid of that. That would be so painful yeah, to let yeah. go of, and you see it in her eyes. My God, that moment, it just welled up with her. She was so sad. Such a great moment. And, yeah. you know, the other great moment from last night's episode was... Uh, Jon Snow now lording over, I forget what it's called, the, the Castle Black. Castle Black. He's lording over Castle Black, and he has to make some pretty big decisions. Oh man! And you, don't, you don't mess with Jon Snow right now. You don't. Don't, mess with, don't no. message on him. Don't mess with him. Oh, don't mess on don't him. Mess I didn't with know if there was a new thing. Don't, mess don't you him. message on Jon Snow <laughs> because last night you really could feel his authority, and I've yeah. always he was more of a quiet, brooding type, the way I am. Uh, <laughs> but last night he's just in charge of Castle Black. I love like there's one moment, and I mentioned this to you already. But there's a moment where they just show his shadow sitting at the the table yeah. in in Castle Black, and it just he puts his hands down and just stands up, and you just feel from that shadow his authority and yeah. the power that he has. And, and the he, decision he made at that moment, like okay, I have to kill one of my brothers now. Well, he never liked down. that guy anyway. No, he didn't, but he's still one of his brothers. It doesn't matter. They're all brothers, and they're all in it together. And you could see in his eyes that he was struggling with this. Well, because he pleads and begs for mercy in the end, which is the worst what way to What would you do out. at the end? You can't. If you're going to die... Just say, ready, I'll just take my head off. I don't care. Well, you well, have to... Take my head off. I don't care. I don't that, know. Does that, that work? In that moment... No, because in that moment... You still need to, he still needs to keep his face because the whole time he was, he decided that was a decision he made. He was going to stand up for, stand up to Jon Snow. He was going to be a dick and throw everything Jon Snow was saying into his face. So yes. if he was going to stick with that, he decided to go down that road. He can't hop to the other road right. just before he dies because it just shows his cowardice. Well, so. He tried to. 
He tried to, and it didn't work. And then, boy, that head came right that came off. Right wow, off. Wow, right it off. That's some pretty gruesome moments. That, yeah, that's the only death, I think, from last night. I forgot. Well, we I did, keep forgetting about that one. But we did see the skin. I the, know, I the, didn't care, though. Just yeah, to, I know, but I'm just saying there were some gross moments, so you couldn't have a donut or eat you. a scone at that moment when it was happening. I could still eat but, a scone. Okay, but... I know, it's just special effects. I get it. But it's still pretty <laughs> gross. It's not really that it's gross. It's pretty nasty. Uh, okay, a couple uh, things. Uh, and I, I'll, I like or, how you make notes, though. It's very sweet. I know. Well, I'm taking this seriously. I, I, uh, I, we already talked about Sansa's return to Winterfell and the North Remembers. Yes, um, her dark yeah. hair. But Littlefinger is still manipulating. Littlefinger still manipulating. There's some questions I had from last night's episode. Uh, one, one of them is the thing that you brought up when we're in uh, Quiburn's uh, chamber. You, you seem to think it's the mountain that's underneath the sheet. I think it's the mountain that's underneath so the sheet. So there's a little scene where he, there's just some rustling underneath mm -hmm. the sheet and you yeah. can't see it. Well, it's a big body under there. Well, there's lots of big people in that, in that area in Winterfell. Probably. Not Winterfell, in the, the King's Landing. It's probably the mountain. And he's chopping off rat's heads and yeah and i like how he's just sitting there he's an interesting character yeah. i don't really know what cersei's I doing with him because when the high priest came in and he was saying hello like hello doesn't to matter. everybody and then he looks at him he's like hello no, doesn't matter that's the other great moment from the episode <laughs> so great. you're right to call that out for great. sure right and then that but that moment that guy got what he deserved even though you didn't see him being thrown into the red keep yeah um that high priest that was he was choosing from the women that were dancing around him ugh what is what a sack of scum. Well, he's I just trying have... to have fun. No, that is not okay. Abusing his power. Uh, just a couple more things that I don't really understand. I understand you're, you're upset about that. The Qui the Quiburn thing. I don't really know how that's going to play out. I like what's happening with that storyline. Uh, yeah. Reek at Winterfell now. He sees Sansa, but right. he doesn't talk to her, and he's hiding. You're right. He's hiding every step of the way. Uh, so he's. I don't know. Maybe he's going to somehow do something good for her at some maybe. point. Uh, and I, He's uh, had no lines <laughs> this whole season yet. I think There's you're been right. no. I don't we'll, know if we're going to we'll hear any dialogue. We'll see if the Reek's line watch continues into the next episode of No Lines. Uh, and then uh, there's. From Mr. You pointed this out. Uh, there's that hole in the House of Black and White. <laughs> there's just the hole in the middle of the floor. With water or poison? What is the. I don't know what it is. Well, people are drinking and they're dying, so... If you go to the House of Black and White, don't drink from the hole in the middle of the floor, no, okay? don't do that. Don't uh, drink from the hole. Um, okay, uh, there's that, but I also... There's also all that cult stuff happening with those yes. um, religious types. Yes, and this, this week was... It's the High Sparrows. Yeah, High Sparrows. And I don't know what the other ones were called last week. Damn it. The, um... Anyway, there's the cults this match? season. Shoot. Yeah. You'll think of it. There's lots of cult action this season, and you know, uh, Cersei decides to go meet the High Sparrow himself. Now, this—I don't think this has ever happened on the show before. Uh, there's a, a guest star, and it's an actor named Jonathan Price, who you. Somebody just said Jonathan Price as soon as you said that. That's amazing. Okay. Well, you could be paying attention to me or the people who are in space. I'm just saying hi. So anyway. I like Jonathan Price. Mm -hmm. I, I, he had a really small role in. You're not even listening. I am listening. This. I am listening. He. He had a really small. Jonathan Price. He had a really small. Role he had a really small role in um, uh, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, which mm -hmm. I loved, and he, and also Brazil is I think probably his most famous film, which is a great film, and we need to find a way to talk about it on the show very soon on the Vic's Basement. Sure. But I was I found the guest starring role of Jonathan Price, who is pretty recognizable, a little jarring. Oh, it, he seemed a little too high profile. And this is a show that really huh. has been able to find small, excellent actors, and not only find them, but also put them in roles and give them things to do that they commit themselves to. And so here was this guy who has so much power. Anyway, I, did, I didn't like him being cast. It felt a little out of the ordinary. Okay. Uh, for the show, right. it just felt a little too. It took me outside of Westeros. It took me f away from everything a little bit more and made me okay. think like, oh yeah, I haven't seen Brazil in a while. I don't want to think those things when I'm watching Game of Thrones. No, of course you like you the know. unknown. I like the bit. unknown actors, and so many, all the unknown actors in the show are fantastic. Yeah, no, it's true. Fantastic. But they're going to be more well known now, and you're going to see them in other things. So maybe yeah. they'll ruin other things for you because you just want to associate them with Game of Thrones. Yeah, and I think that's true. And you, you actually got to ride in an elevator with Reek. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And we had. Are you, did you Facebook him? No, he was really cool though. 
I didn't ask. You know his sister is Lily Allen, the singer? Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, I know. Whatever, it's fine. So we did just a little bit of gossip. Uh, so <laughs> um, okay, so I just want to I want to point yeah, out ahead. because um, no, no, there's a really somebody said um, Zifak said that the House of Black and White is actually where people go to die. Like they didn't explain it in the show at all. I guess it's in the books though. That's where people go to die in the House of Black and White. So maybe that it is poison I've, in the middle of the room. Yeah, maybe that's that's. Thank you, Zifrax. The. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. La last night's episode was very uh, busy yeah. and uh, strangely unsatisfying. And maybe the unsatisfying feeling that I'm feeling comes from there were zero scenes. I don't, can't remember the last time this happened. Zero Daenerys scenes. We don't know. We didn't see her at all. Zero. No. And that's well, we kind of strange. Well, someone dressed up as her, which was interesting. But I knew it was not her. Of course. Uh, but we know that, I just feel like we need to have a little bit of build up. We're not gonna see her this episode because these characters are on the way to see her. So, and also a lot happened with her in the last episode. I feel like a so lot will happen in the next episode and they took lot, a step away from her my, this time. It's, yeah, it's true. And also there just seemed to be a lot of scenes where there was no end point. Like the scene with Arya and that girl washing that man, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. I, I have no know. idea what that scene was. That's true. I, I didn't know what it was either, and I've, I've watched it more than once, as I've said. Uh, I couldn't figure it out. I don't know why yeah. that's relevant. Maybe it'll... Yeah, I, the show is very good at keeping things tight and making yeah. things pay off. So I have sure. faith that it's all going to mean something bigger, and we're all going to get something satisfying from yes. all these scenes. Of course, sure. All of these things. Um, we didn't even see the Red Woman in this one either. Wait, there's okay. a lot of characters. I know you but, don't like singer, but I do. No, but, you know, Daenerys is obviously huge, and her struggles are huge and a huge part of the show. Uh -huh. And to not have her in an episode really is, it, you're like, well, I guess we, you know, she's usually in a very balmy location where sure. there's sand and, and palm trees and stuff and sunshine. And so this time there, there, was, there was no Daenerys. And, yeah, uh, that's fine, but we did, see, we did meet a new red priestess that was preaching in the middle of... Um, yeah. Wherever they were on their way to see Daenerys. Volantis. Yes, Volantis. And um, that's very good, Joan. Thank you. <laughs> I believe it's on but one of my note Tyrion, cards. But Tyrion, you know, he had to get out of that friggin' box. But it was hilarious. Oh, that scene know, where it first opened when he needs to get out of this box. So I great. Need to get out of this box. So great. And yes. you know, the other thing uh, that we didn't talk about, another but, great moment, but. very subtle that it just flies by, even flies out of our heads, okay. when he tries to, when he goes up to the whore and tells her that he used to be one of the richest men and then oh, he, yeah. she takes his hand and he looks at the hand and I mean I th he's thinking of Shay of course and yeah. he, he's said I don't understand what's happening to me right now and he just says I can't do this and uh, he didn't feel any blood rush to his peen couldn't do it that's probably what happened. This is a family show. No, it isn't. Come on. It is a family show. Anyway, I love that. And there's nothing about the show that's family. We're fighting now. Uh, anyway, I, I, I loved... I didn't love last night's episode. I don't know why I'm saying that. I, uh, I feel like it was an important episode. There were lots of uh, seeds planted mm -hmm. that will uh, hopefully bear fruit later well, I on. I the seeds have already been planted. Yeah. It's just that moment now in between where you start to see the green sprouts and you know that something's happening underneath the soil. So we're waiting for something to happen. I know. My <laughs> analogies are getting stronger. <laughs> you're, so. you're like a botanist. It's unbelievable. <laughs> don't forget. But I feel like that's what's happening, though. Bids at EPN.TV, yes. any of the stuff we talked about at the very beginning of the show, that's all available. You can go to our website. What's our website now? Electplay.com? Is that oh our website? Oh my goodness, EPN. EPN.TV. That's our website. Yes. Okay, so it's the same as the oh, email address. Oh my goodness. Beep, beep, beep. Anyway. Beep, 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 beep. It's, yeah, bids at EPN.TV. Send them in. Um, and then, you know, we just really, we really want to do right by a fa our fans yeah. and uh, Kyle. Just, it would be really nice if people could send in. And we got some good bids, bids, and we would just like some more good bids. Good so, bids. Good bids. I did get a bid for baking, apparently. Okay, that's interesting. But it's not on the list. But I can send some baked goods with the stuff that you purchased for me on my list if the bid is good enough. So this is the time of the day when we have to sing the end of the show song, which is the show <laughs> is over now, now. The show, the show is now. over now. Show oh, is no. over now. I made it up a different show's uh, over. Okay, fine. But you didn't finish your cruller. I'm going to do I it now. I ate that donut Show's so over. fast. <laughs> you did. I know you want that other one. I, Listen. Mm, I, I do want it. Thanks for watching. I know it's early on Monday morning. Thanks for being here. We count on you, and we always try to bring you something <laughs> kind of special. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.
Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> we'll see you Friday for Vic's Basement. Vic's Basement would like to thank its sponsors, EB Games, Nintendo, Xbox, and Gameloft, makers of Dragon Mania Legends, which you can play for free right now.